So as the title of the video suggests, we're going to be discussing how a second ring to Aaron Rodgers' legendary career would affect his all-time legacy. Believe it or not, there is a lot to dive into for today's video, which includes some things you probably wouldn't think of. We're going to dive into a brief quarterback rankings of all time, and more so me saying them out loud than my actual personal rankings. I want to get clear after the intro that after the first three or four quarterbacks, they are not my actual rankings, and it's more so playing devil's advocate for whether or not Rodgers is below them now, above them now, or about the same as they are. We have to discuss about where he ranks all time at the moment, and realistically, how far he can move up the rankings. But before we get started, I wanted to say we are less than 100 subscribers away from 15,000, so if you could help me get there before Christmas and give your boy an early Christmas present at that, I would be very appreciative of your support. Please like the video while you're at it, as each only take a second to do. Now let's dive into Aaron Rodgers' legacy. So when looking at Roger's legacy, I want to go back in time for a minute. As weird as this sounds, I want to go to Super Bowl 49 when the Patriots beat the Seattle Seahawks. Up until that point, the GOAT debate was pretty much Montana, Brady, Peyton, or in some variation of that order. But when Tom won his fourth, it pretty much went Tom, Montana, Peyton, because at that point in time, Peyton had just one ring. And I realized football is the ultimate team game, and that a lot of the time players can't control whether they have rings or not, but the ring argument is 100% used and will always be used with quarterbacks. So after that night, Tom was largely considered a GOAT or one of the top two, and what's crazy is it really wasn't thought of like that entering the game. Up until that, he was 3-2 and two in Super Bowls, and the conversation could have been could have been had, don't get me wrong, but people weren't flaunting him being the GOAT like they were after that game. The rest is history, and now Tom has 6, and he will likely finish with 6. So I brought that up because Aaron isn't in the GOAT conversation now, but if he does win a second one this year, he won't be either, but he will certainly be propelled into the Mount Rushmore area if you will. When ranking all-time quarterbacks, it normally goes around Tom, Joe, and Peyton, or Tom, Peyton, Joe, etc. After that, it's kind of a toss-up between players like John Elway, Drew Brees, Dan Marino, Aaron Rodgers, and Brett Favre. Again, not my rankings, just thinking out loud here. Occasionally, you'll have someone toss in Steve Young or somebody like that. But if Aaron Rodgers caps off the 2020 season with an MVP, because the reality is Patrick Mahomes throwing a few interceptions on Sunday the way he did, probably lost him the regular season MVP award. Rodgers' efficiency this year, and really for his whole career, is absolutely absurd, and that will be a large reason he takes home the MVP trophy, if in fact he does. So if Aaron wins the Super Bowl this year and shreds through the postseason the way he has through this entire regular season, then this season he has had then has to be in the greatest ever conversation. MVP and Super Bowl MVP hasn't been done often, and it would be, believe it or not, the first time this century. Numbers also weren't looked at or seen as a reference point like they are now, and it's very possible Rodgers finishes this regular season with a 46 or 47 touchdown to 4 interception ratio. That season alone would be in the top 3 or 4 ever, but then to throw a Super Bowl ring and Super Bowl MVP on it would be even better. So I am going on record as I record this, saying that if the Packers win the Super Bowl this year and Rodgers plays good in the postseason, then yes this is the best season a quarterback has ever had. And if for whatever reason you're thinking that's absurd, I would counter with this. Who tops it? 2007 Tom? Well, he lost to Eli and the Giants in the Super Bowl before they could go 19-0. 2013 record-breaking Peyton Manning got absolutely embarrassed in the Super Bowl as the Broncos lost by 5 touchdowns, and 5,000-yard, 50-touchdown 2018 Mahomes never made it to the big game. This season would be the best ever if Rodgers can pull it off, but that alone would not make him the GOAT. It would move him considerably up the rankings though, as Rodgers passes both the eye test and the stats test. A lot of the time when discussing all-time players, it's most of the time heavily based on accolades and rarely their actual ability. But in Rodgers' case, there isn't a throw he can't make. We've all seen him make absurd throws where only he or Patrick Mahomes can. And in his own way, he was Mahomes before Mahomes. A decade ago, there wasn't players doing what they both do now, where they get out of the pocket, extend the play, then fire a bullet halfway across the field for a 35-yard gain. And if any quarterbacks did, well, they certainly weren't doing it on a consistent basis. 
So if the Packers do win the Super Bowl and Rodgers gets a second ring, then the speculation of how long he plays will start to be brought up. Not by Rodgers, of course, but by analysts everywhere. Rodgers is 37 years old, but with how he played this year, there's absolutely no signs of slowing down. And with the fuel in his fire of having his franchise, his franchise, select a quarterback in the first round this year still there, well, I don't expect Rodgers to regress anytime soon. Heading into this season, though, there was was legitimate concern whether he would significantly fall off as a passer, as his pass rating for three consecutive years was below 100, and he hadn't thrown for more than 26 passing touchdowns in a year since 2016. Not that that's bad for really anybody, but for him and the standards he's had, it is low. But those concerns have certainly been eased, as he will throw for his third 40 touchdown season of his career this year, which would put him first all time. Now one thing that can be said about Rodgers, and I don't think this is a knock, but some probably do. Someone somewhere probably thinks this is horrible about him, and they have them low in their rankings because of it. But Rodgers will probably never have a 5,000 yard season or lead the league in passing yards. He probably won't finish his career with the most passing touchdowns either, and that's fine because of how dominant he's been for the past decade. What makes Rodgers different than pretty much any other quarterback in the top 5 or 10 all time is he just does not throw interceptions. He has started for over a decade in the NFL now, and he has missed some games here and there, don't get me wrong, and I don't know if you know this or not, but he doesn't have 100 career interceptions. And what's even more insane is if you take out his first season starting, of him really getting to learn the ropes of the NFL, he wouldn't even have 75 interceptions. He is hyper-efficient, and the numbers he puts up are almost video game-like. Now, no disrespect to players like Peyton, Tom, and Drew, and everybody that played before Rodgers, but those three combined specifically. And before I share this stat, this is a testament to Aaron to show how dominant and how different he is as a premier passer in the NFL. But Peyton, Tom, and Drew have combined for 41 double-digit interception seasons. Tom has 11, Drew has 14, and Peyton has 16 of those. For comparison, Rodgers has 2. So he has more than 5 times less the amount of double digit interception seasons than Tom, 7 for Drew, and 8 for Peyton. So this one ring for Rodgers could mean an immense amount for his career's legacy, and for the respect he gets as an all-time great. So having said that, I would ask you, the viewer, where Rodgers currently ranks all time. Right now, I think it's anywhere in the 5-8 to eight range, but if he can pull this off and win a ring this year, he is, I mean, he has to be at minimum 5. This one ring in this next month and a half is crucial for Rodgers' career and ultimately his legacy. If you watch Rodgers play versus another all-time great like a Drew, Peyton, or Tom, then I think it's fair to say, well, really more than fair to say, he's right up there with them. And with the eye test, people will say things like Rodgers is the GOAT or Rodgers is better than those guys because of his athleticism. We do this currently with Mahomes with some of the plays he makes with the arm angles, but in a sense Aaron was Pat before he arrived. The common discussion right now is how good can Pat be and can Pat be the GOAT if he stays the course, but remember this was the same conversation that was said about Aaron 8-9 to nine years ago. In a span of two years, Patrick did the opposite order of what Aaron did. He won the Super Bowl in 2010 and with that came a Super Bowl MVP, and in 2011 he had a legendary 45-6 to six touchdown to interception ratio. Side note, what's insane is he will, barring something crazy in the next three weeks, have a more absurd ratio than that. I'm sure there will be some quarterback at some point to come along and break this, because all records are meant to be broken, but to have two 40-plus passing touchdown seasons with less than six interceptions is GOAT territory in itself. But the speculation of his career and how good he could become was very real, and it's the same for Patrick now. There's a very real possibility that I'm making a video similar to this in 10 years about what does it mean if Patrick wins his 7th ring, kidding of course, it's completely a joke, but the point is, he is on the same trajectory if not higher than Rodgers was. If in this scenario Rodgers does not take a step back in the postseason and beats Mahomes Chiefs in Super Bowl 55, then as we said, this is the best season a quarterback has ever had. It would also propel him way up in the rankings, and I personally think he would then be number 4 all time. A third ring would do even more wonders, but to get a third, he obviously has to get a second. What's crazy is, at 37 years old, is how good he is. Now, Peyton did regress immensely between 37 and 39, as he threw nearly double the interceptions as touchdowns in 2015, just two years after throwing for a record 
55 touchdowns in a season. Now what this video is saying is how much a second ring impacts Aaron Rodgers' legacy, and not he better win it now because he'll fall off dramatically like Peyton did just two years from now. Rodgers' athleticism and the way he can move around in the pocket will keep him afloat for a while, and there is legitimate reason to think he can play well into his 40s. Who knows how many rings he'll finish with and how many touchdowns, but when it's all said and done, he will be at minimum a top 5 quarterback of all time. And a ring in 2020 would certainly solidify him being there. And with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. This was a change of pace type video, so if you enjoyed this, let me know. This is something I had fun doing, so if you want more content like this, let me know. And it would be great to do in the offseason for the lull period of the NFL between the May and July area. But let me know if you like this video, what you didn't like about this video, or any way you would want to see it improved. Now that's all I have. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're still watching. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Deuces. Peace.